Dun, dun, dun. Hey, hello, Allen Eagles, or should I say the 401 Eagles? Let me go ahead and put this out of the way, and let me hide my secret behind. There we go. I think we're ready to go. Get the timer. How are you doing? Yeah. Okay. Sure. Yeah, I can't really hear you. Just kidding. Hey, guys, we're here with another math lesson, and what do we have here? Problem solving, reading for math, meaning. I guess you really do need to know how to read to do math because that's really what real math problems are. You have to read stuff. Anyways, we're going to be doing problem solving, so that's the topic. And just for those people at home, if you're wanting to do additional worksheets to kind of help you out, this happens to be 2-6. Ooh, look at that. That's a lightning bolt. 2-6 in your math. I'm sorry, in your folders, be Chapter 2, Lesson 2-6. Okay. Anyway. Here we go. Objective is students will be able to determine if a problem needs an estimate or an exact answer. Okay, you might have had this last year. This was what used to be a California standard. Apparently, it's still something that we need to do for Common Core. So we're going to find out whether a problem needs an estimate or an exact answer, and we'll get into that briefly. We also have the language objective. That's right. The language objective basically says that I work carefully and blank, blank, blank to see if my answer was reasonable. And we'll take a look at that a little bit later, but we will use this language objective as well. Okay, that being said, let me get my calligraphic pens to come. Calligraphy is the cool little art of the, how this works. Let me go ahead and hit page. There we go. So we have this problem here, and basically we have a title that says students receive books from Paraguay. That's right, Paraguay. Paraguay is a country, you know, in South America. And so the problem in step one, which is so key, is that we need to read. That's right. We need to read the problem. We can't go very far if we don't read. And the reading says that the Mountain View Elementary sends used books to a school in Paraguay. Oh. I didn't kind of mess up here. There should have been a capital letter. The school in Paraguay, yeah, I should have had a capital letter here. Oh, I'm going to correct my work. There we go. Edit. The school in Paraguay receives four boxes with 32 books, 32 books in each box. If the students put book covers on each book, um, how many book covers will they make? Okay, so that's the problem. Now, when we're doing this problem solving, and just so you know, really quick, I'm going to tell you this right now. I'm giving you the, um, the code word in a lot of pieces. That's the first one. Okay, got it. Hey, you better write it down. So anyway, basically, it says that if they put book covers on each book, how many book covers will they make? Well, let's go ahead and jump down to, let me do this again, and go to the page here. Ooh, we can come down here. So here we have the same. So here's our problem again. It's just a little smaller. I shrunk it. Hey, I have that ability. So the first thing we want to do is when we were looking at the read part is, well, what do you know? I mean, what do we know? Well, we do know who my magic's not working. My magic wand. What? what do you know? Well, we know the number of boxes. We do. Look at this four boxes and we know the number. Remember, that symbol means number. It doesn't mean we're going to play tic-tac-toe, you guys. Come on. Focus. This is about... It means number. The number of books in each box. So, that's important for us to start to solve the problem. Now, the other thing that's really important is we need to know what, what what's the goal here. So, this is the information that we have. And as you can see, we know that we have to... Um, this is where underlining comes in. So we have four boxes with 30 books in each box. And this is what do you need to find out. Well, that's always in the question. How many book covers will they make? I bet that's what's hiding behind the curtain. Ta-da! Yes, it was. How many covers to make is what we're trying to find out. We're breaking the problem into pieces. We're, yes, it's like we call it chunking. When you read, we chunk. We take all these little syllables. We put them together. We make words. And voila. We read. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and go to the next page here. And for those people at home, we're wondering what three of seven means. That means page three of seven. Now we're on page four. So the math skill here is basically are we going to estimate or do we need to um, find the exact answer? 
Let me find a different color. Let's just use black. So estimate or exact answer. What does that problem recall? I mean, require, not recall. So what does it require? It requires, yeah, that we, we need to have an exact answer because we have a certain number of books that need to be covered. If we were just to estimate, we may not get the right amount. So this is really important. So sometimes when you look at problems, estimating is a good thing. Um, you know, how many people were at Petco Park, for example? Maybe a, a, an exact answer would not be required. Whereas, you know, other problems, we need an exact answer and estimate. I'm sorry, you know, you have to look at each one. Next, you can use an estimate, you know, when you do, you know, when you do not need to know the exact number of something. Okay. Maybe it's too difficult to find the exact answer. Um, sometimes a problem will use the words about, and those are key. The word about, oh, by the way, coming over here real quick. This is the next part of the code. Okay, so the word about is um, a key that you're looking for an estimate. Okay, also the word approximately is another example. And let me see if I can spell this right. Oh, sorry, that's an I there. Okay, so when you're saying approximately about, we're looking for an estimate. Okay, so let's move on to the next stage here. So now we're looking at plan. So now we know by the reading skill. So now we're going to plan. We're going to plan what we're going to do. Well, we, it says you, we, I need to know how many books are coming from Paraguay. Okay, in this problem, we would need that exact answer because we need to know how many books if we're going to cover them. Okay, which we already determined. Okay, move to the next page here. So now we're coming down to the easy part. Well, the part you guys like getting that answer. Okay, we did all that understanding. So if we have four boxes, correct, and we have 32 books in each box, could we not then say that that is our equation? Now, an equation, when they ask you to show your work by an equation, this is what they mean. So 32 multiplied by 4 is what we're finding out. Well, 2 times 4, last time I checked, was 8. Because that's a double. And then 4 times 3 is 12. So that would equal 128. Not 128, but 128. So um, we need to make 128 covers to answer that question. Okay? You okay with that? Does that all make sense? Hocus pocus. We got all this. We're good? Okay. Now, seems like we're done, doesn't it? No. No! But we're not. What's this bear doing here? No. Oh! Okay. What? What are you saying? Oh? Really? Oh, yeah. You know, I speak a little bear language. I didn't tell you. He's telling you, if you don't look back at your work and check your answer, that he might have to find out where you live. No. He's not going to be a happy camper. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, like a bear would camp anyway. But okay, so that means we have to actually check our work. So look back and think to ourselves, well, if I were to estimate 4 times 32, let's do that. Because you did that in our last lesson. Oop, wrong one. Come back. Come back. So, you know, 4 times 32 could kind of be written probably just like 30, right, times 4. And if we do that math, oop, that's just an equal sign, we get 120. Yes, by looking back, I can say that I did do that. So, therefore, eh, the product is close to what the my estimate was right here because we had 128. That's real close. Okay? Sorry, Mr. Bear. What? Oh, sorry, you want to say something else? No, don't do it again. Oh, no. Oh, he's not working. Work. Uh, yeah. Okay. All right. All right. We heard enough of you. Okay. All right. Time to. So now we're going to go back up to our language objective. Whoa. I know. I'm fast. And by the way, the rest of your code word was this. Now you just have to put them all together and you should have a word. No hyphens, please. So I worked carefully and yeah, you know what? Oh, you can hardly see this. Oop, and that's not going to work. All right. We're going to get another color. Like, 
Mm, red should show up on that, hopefully. And and check my answer. Or check my work carefully. And I worked carefully and whoop, checked my, yeah, I think work sounds better. Any one of those would fit in there. You get the idea to see if my answer was reasonable. Okay? And that is one of the mathematical practices. And with that, my friends, you're going to find it hard to believe, but that fun-filled time is over. Yes, all things have to come to an end. And this session is over. So I am going to say hasta luego and look for the quiz.